modern ciphers, as well as old ciphers, can be viewed as some combination of uh, some basic operations, which we call primitives. The uh, most common among them are substitution, transposition, split and concatenation, and bit-by-bit -bit operation. Let's go over them quickly so we get a sense of what they are. Substitution uh, is a primitive that applies really to all four of them. Every time you substitute one combination of letters or symbols with another, that's substitution. Uh, if you change the order, you can call it substitution too. Uh, so, substitution is generic. However, when we uh, talk about substitution as a generic uh, as a primitive, we uh, refer to substitution where we have sort of a table that says that the letter B, uh, let's say in the plain text, is replaced by the letter G, so the letter F is replaced by the letter T, etc. Now, the, well, there is such a table, we call the operation substitution. Now, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one, -one. it can be that the letter B uh, can be replaced by G, H, Z, and the letter C by the letters K, a and T, and the letter uh, uh, Z can be replaced by the number 3, and that's it. So, any combination uh, will work. Uh, as long as there is uh, somewhere a table that tells us what we su substitute for what. And this same table can be used for encryption, for someone who wants to hide uh, these uh, symbols with those and for decryption when somebody wants to go to the reverse and go from here back to here. It works, it works both ways. Now in a elaborate uh, substitution those, this table is a little bit tricky. For example, we can have B that goes to G and goes to Q and goes to W, and the choice can be random. And it doesn't matter because all three of them uh, go back to B. That's called one to many, many to one. You substitute B by one of those three options, and e e either one of them goes back to B. So. On the decryption side, if I see a G, I know, aha, originally it was a B. If I see a Q, aha, it was a B. But if I have a B, I have a choice. This choice can be made randomly or can be used to send additional piece of information just by uh, selecting the right choice. If I select G, I signal to the reader something beyond the substitution. In, if instead I said Q, I send uh, a, an extra signal to, uh, etc. Uh, the uh, table that, that specifies this uh, substitution can be static, meaning every time that you see uh, an F, it becomes T. Every time that you see an E, it becomes B. Or it can be dynamic. Dynamic means that the first time you, that you encounter an E, it translates to B. The second time you encounter E, it translates to D. The third time it translates to uh, W or whatever. The dynamic one is the one that we use today. The reason is that if we use static, if, for example, we just say that E always goes into B, it will be very easy for a cryptanalyst to uh, find that B 
it presents E. How? If the original plain text is a common English text, we can use uh, frequency of letter as a great guide for uh, cracking codes that are based on, the, on a substitution that is stationary. Because we know that the letter E is the most popular letter uh, in the English alphabet. It appears about 14% of all characters in the typical English text. So if we see the letter B appears 14% in the text, aha, uh -huh, that means that B represents E. And the same for the percentage of appearance of T, G, H, all the letters have the typical uh, percentage of, uh, of appearance in an English text. And it's true for any language, it has its own thing. So that's so much for substitution. Onward, uh, transposition. Transposition is very simple. You don't even need a total alphabet. A transposition is simply changing the order. If I have something written A, B, C, D, then B, C, D, A is a transposition. D, B, C, A is another uh, transposition. So we can have here many transposition. And uh, uh, if I have a particular key that tells me how to take an order here of A, B, C, D, and create another order, let's say D, B, C, A. Then, if I use the same key, I can reverse back to this key. Now, you might say, this, is, this doesn't sound as very strong encryption, a very strong way of hiding something. If I want to hide the word love, and I do transposition, and I send the word O, L, E, V, uh, well... Somebody looking at this long enough will eventually guess that uh, love is what I meant to say. However, that is only true if the, uh, if the letters are, uh, the number of letters is small and uh, very minimal. If uh, you get into a sentence and you uh, reorder all the letters in a sentence, that becomes much more difficult. Basically, if you have four letters, you have four times three times two combination uh, for the, uh, the different transposition. There are 24 here. But if there are five letters, then they are five times that. That's already 120, I believe. Six letters, six times five. 100 letters, you have 100 times 99, times 98, etc., up to you, you come to, to this point. Now, this should be 100. Now, this is a huge number. That means that the number of transposition is enormous. Now, before we go on with transposition, I would uh, cover one more point of interest regarding transposition, and that is the fact that uh, we may be tempted to take uh, some kind of a combination here and use some kind of a key to get another transposition and then make it more difficult using another key, another transposition, and another key, another transposition, and then say, oh, now the adversary will have to find this key and this key and this key, and only then he will find the plain text because we have mixed it and mixed it and mixed it so thoroughly. We might be tempted. But if we have enough mathematical insight, we realize, uh-uh, it won't work. Because whatever this uh, transposition is, there is a single key, K4, that connects from here to here. So you don't get more uh, confusion more obscurity, more cryptographic uh, productivity when you add more keys. And you find this out that there is a shortcut key with mathematical insight. It highlights the point that, yes, here we found it, but if we have something else, 
Des A S A S A. Maybe also there is some mathematical insight that we haven't yet discovered that tells us that it can be shortcut. That all the difficulties that we believe that, that our adversary will face is not necessarily what he will face because he is smarter than we expect him to be smarter than we are. That's position. Now, onward. Uh, split and concatenation. You take a list and you split it to A and B. And then you take A and you concatenate it with C. A and C. And you have here a new string. So that's very simple. You split a string and you concatenate. Bit by bit operation. That's interesting. It works on a string A that is uh, some sort of a, a binary sequence and a string B that is another sort of binary uh, sequence. And bit by bit operation is that we get is such that we generate a, a third uh, string C, where we take the first bit in A with the first bit in B, and we create a bit in C based on a table that says 0, 1, 0, 1, and here we enter four combination. It can be, let's say, 0, 1, 1, 1, or 0, 1, 0, 0. Anything that we want, any such table is a guide that tells us 1 and 0, 1 and 0, the result is 0. Uh, this table tells us what is the result of this bit going with this bit to create uh, the result bit here. There is a result here, 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 and that's how we get a third string. Now, for this to work, the length of A must equal the length of B. Otherwise, there will be some leftover bits in B or in A that don't have a bit on the other string to work with. So, bit by bit operation uh, works only if we have uh, two strings of equal length. Now, the most common table that we use is called XOR. Uh, very simply, uh, 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0. So if we want to XOR this uh, uh, A and B here, it's very simple. Uh, 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 0 and 1 is 1, according to this table, 1 and 0 is 1, 1 and 1, 0, 0 and 0, 0. So if we have A and B and we X or them, the sign is A, X or B, we get C, and this is what happens. Now, if you will check out you will find something very interesting that makes XOR such an interesting uh, instrument. And that is, if you take C and you XOR it with A, what do you get? B. If you get C and XOR it with B, what do you get? A. Let's check it. If we XOR C times B, 1 over 0, according to this table, is 1. 1 over 1, 0. 1 over 0, 1. 0 over 1, 1. 0 over 0, 0. So if you do XOR this bit with this bit, this with this, this with this, you get exactly A. And the same with the other one. So that is the uh, property of XOR. These are all the common uh, Primitives. The uh, most uh, popular uh, cipher 
ever used until AES is now taking over from it, is DES, Data Encryption System, is uh, comprised of these operations again and again and again and again to get complexity in a way that we hope avoids the trap that we have seen in transposition. So, substitution, transposition, split concatenation and bit by bit operation are the foundations of the primitives that are the building blocks of the ciphers and the uh, uh, complex systems of ancient and modern crypto.